Okay, we're rolling. Good deal. You want to start it off? I do. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hi, this is Lindsey Granquist from the Mobile, Alabama Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Generations, and today we're here to talk about some real estate trends in our area. Boom. Southern Pride <laughs> Real Estate Show in action again. Uh, like like our, uh, our producer connoisseur of real estate, just uh, one of the chief uh, pillars in this market, Lindsey Granquist, uh, came in today to uh, share some of her knowledge with us about some really helpful tips on how to get the ball rolling, what, what works, what doesn't for buyers and sellers, stuff like that. We're going to just kind of dive right in and, uh, and cover some of this stuff. And uh, if you guys have any questions, of course, put it in the comments uh, underneath the video and stuff. So from that, we'll get going. So Lindsay, how long have you been in the business? This is my sixth practicing year. Started in 2010. Um, I was funny whenever I started in real estate. I always told people one of my taglines was uh, selling customer, having fantastic customer service since 2010. And it was funny because I started that tagline in 2010 when it did not make any sense at all. But as I I, as I get older and as my time in real estate, as I get seasoned, it's really uh, actually became something to actually hold on to. Yeah. Definitely. I remember that when we started out with that, that was kind of a funny tagline, it, but it, it it took legs and walked, and we were like, oh yeah, this works. <laughs> it's funny how some of that stuff works in marketing for you as well. Um, you know, so with that being said, you know, I know when you first started going, um, just like any new agent, you're trying to fin figure out the business and what works and what doesn't work, you know, buyers, sellers, what do I say, what's the wrong thing, am I going to screw this up? There's all these things going through your head. So let's kind of start with uh, when you're working with clients and advice, you know, before we dive into it, whether it's a buyer or a seller, is there is there any one piece of uh, advice or a pearl that you would say, just working with people in general, this is, this is something that works with you, um, you know, to get the ball rolling or to make them feel better, whatever. What's, what's, what's one thing you could drop on us to make us um, have some value out of that? What I think a lot of agents lack is just being extremely upfront um, and honest immediately. Giving people realistic timelines of how long it's going to take for deals to close. Being realistic about what potentially could come back on the home inspections. Um, just well, giving the buyers and the sellers as much knowledge as possible up front so that there's no surprises. This is the largest investment that people will make in their entire lives. Let's give them as much information and let's handle everything with candor and be as completely honest as possible at any given time. Candor is such a good word. Candor, honesty with care. Honesty with care. It Don't tell them been. what they want to hear, what they need to hear is what they yes, what you got to say. Absolutely. So that being the case, you know, honesty, you know, is always the best medicine because it will save you in the end a lot of times. That foundation that you put down first um, is what kind of saves you in the end if you ever need it. Whether you need it or not, um, when you do need it is when it counts. You know, so the, if you never have to use it because everything was smooth, that's great. But when you do need it, you'll want it to be there as that foundation for sure. So... Um, moving to, uh, let's just say listings, working with sellers and stuff like that. What is, uh, you know, what is the secret to your success in, uh, in getting listings sold quick? Because, you know, your properties don't stay on the market very long, um, and you definitely have a systematic approach to it. Uh, what do you, what, what can you say uh, would be something that gets those listings sold quick? Again, I go back to the answer of being completely honest with your sellers up front. I think too often agents will go in and just kind of, fabricate this beautiful life that these sellers want to hear but at the end of the day that's not realistic so I will go in and I'll say you know this room looks fantastic however we need to declutter just a little bit um, we need to take a rule of thumb for me is one piece of furniture out of every single room um, that just kind of makes things look larger more spacious a little bit more airy uh, but like I said just being completely honest with them I know that you really want 150 for your property I completely understand that I want you to get 150 but to be completely honest with you, the market just doesn't support that right now. I understand what your house is worth to you, but we've got to sell your house twice. First, we have to sell your house to a buyer that's going to walk in this house and write us an offer. But then we have to sell your house again to an appraiser. And if we price this house at the price that you're thinking, around 150 then that's just not going to happen. So let's let's just try a lower price. If you just believe in me and trust me and trust my systems, then we're going to get this property moved, which is your desired result, right? To get this property sold. So your 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 wallpaper's ugly. 
you gotta take that down. <laughs> yeah. This chair is horrid. Gotta Get it go. out. And I know you want this for your house, but this is what the market says. Absolutely. I know, I'm just kidding. You don't say it ugly like that. <laughs> but you want to, you know, basically remove the things that are going to keep it from selling. Basically is what you're getting at and positioning it with price and stuff like that to where you can say it eloquently to them. Absolutely. But this is what we have to work with. And what if they can't do that? Do you take the listing or, or do you not take the listing? Meaning not like I'm not going to take this listing then, but like just let them know, you know, if you can't do this price, um, you know, you know, with what the market is telling us it can do, um, maybe we should just wait or something like that. I mean, are, are, you don't just go ahead and take the listing if uh, if they're just way out of the ballpark, you know, do you? Or you know, If they're recommend? way out of the ballpark, no, I'm not going to take that listing because it's not going to deliver results for anyone um, in the marketplace amongst the rest of the agents that are out there looking at me. It's showing that I'm not listing properties at realistic prices, so I'm kind of losing rapport with other agents in the market. Mm -hmm. um, but as far, if we're not far apart from a price, then I'll say, let's just try it for a couple of months, you know, Let's put it on the market. If it doesn't get the activity that you or I are desiring or, or the results that we're really wanting, we need to pull it. Um, and let's find other routes. You know, let's get in touch with a rental company and I'm going to put you on my database, but you need to rent this house for 12 months if that's an option. These are just options here. Um, but let's find some other routes or let me set up a, a plan to where I'm going to get in touch with you in 10 months and then we'll see if we can relist, you know, at month 12 or whatever the case may be. So it just really depends on those numbers. Um, I will tell you when I'm dealing with a seller that's just being hard-headed and they don't owe a large amount or it's not that they have to get a large amount, this is a strategy that I love to do. I'll tell them, hey, let's list at your price, the 150 Let's list at that. Let's go with what you think. However, today during my listing presentation, I'm going to go ahead and have you sign a price adjustment to the price that I am saying that your property will move at. So we're going to list it where you want to list it for a couple of weeks. Let's measure the activity. Let's see the traffic that we get. But you're agreeing today that if this doesn't work, I'll already have a signed document from you that we get to list it where I think we're going to see results. Is it is the key in, in delivering that message in the tone? Oh, absolutely. And it depends on who your seller is. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important that we match tones with our seller. If you think they're being a little stern, don't completely bow down to them. You know, you're the professional here, you're the expert here. So make sure you show that in both your, your voice, your tone. Have confidence. Yes, and through your body language. Gotcha. Okay, so moving quickly to the buyer side of things, what is it that uh, if you're dealing with somebody that, you know, they want to do this and they keep telling you, yeah, we're ready to buy a house, what is, the, what is your magic uh, potion for getting them to get off the fence and let's start looking at houses? The main thing I always find out from everyone is what is your timeline? That is first thing. Yes. First thing. What is your timeline? Because um, they said it. Yes, absolutely. Because if their lease is up next month, I know that we've got to move very quickly. If their lease is up in six months, I know that we don't need to waste too much time right now looking at what's available on the market. Because in four months, when we get ready to write an offer, those houses aren't going to be available. And timing of the year is critical too, because it has a cycle. Absolutely. You know, of course, I always feel like you know March to. July is where we really make the bulk of our income. So, you know, getting them, you know, out there when it's when it's hot, especially for a seller, if they want to get on the market, you know, it's like, look, you need to do it now. You know, at Christmas time, it's hard to kind of go, hey, you need to do it now because, right. you know, it's just not as hot unless you're in just not hot market, which right now we've been blessed with having that for sure. All right. Um, so you're looking at houses, you're with a buyer, you know, how do you get somebody to say, you know, it's time to get real. We got to figure out a way to make this come together. We got to pick a house, you know, because you don't want to go show somebody 50 houses and still be unsure if we're really going to do anything, right? You right. know, so like, what is the magic word or is there a, a word? Is it just like part of your process, I guess, that builds up to actually getting that, uh, that mental uh, minds, mindset to, we're serious about this and we are looking for a house. We understand that every house, like th it might not be perfect and have every one of those things, but you know, like, what is that, what is that magic uh, formula for you to get them to uh, to get real and say, hey, let's start writing up some offers. Uh, up front, to always get as much information as possible because that allows me to set my met metrics or my boundaries, if you will. So if they're sending me several houses, let's say 50 houses, I already know their square footage that they're not willing to negotiate on. Um, the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, if it has car shelter. So if you get all of this up front and they send you a list of 50, you're going to be able to knock out 
30 to 40 of those yourself because they're going to have a fireplace, but they said they specifically do not want a fireplace. Okay, it has to have a fenced-in backyard. This one does not. So that's when you get to step in as their agent and say, hey, I pulled out the list of things that you and I discussed, your wants and needs, and unfortunately, more than half of these don't have that. So let's schedule the ones that I have felt like are going to be you know, the best um, offers for you, the best homes for you to look at in order to make offers on, and we'll go from there. Good deal. Um, kind of like taking away, you know, the, you use their verbiage to negate this. Mm -hmm. You're not making the decision for them. You're making the decision based off what they said. You know, so that this always works. Seems like, you know, you get, you get somebody that says, this is what I've got to have. As long as you get them to tell you that you have that framework to work off of, kind of negates a lot of stuff. And something else I love to do is as we're viewing homes, I always say, on a scale from 1 to 10, rate this house. And if, let's say they give me a four, and then we go to the next house. On a scale from one to ten, rate this house. And they say, this one's a two. So I say, as far as on their list, okay? So, so what you're telling me is that we're going to move the one that we just walked out of up higher on the list than the one that we just left because you rated it at the four. So what I'm always continuously trying to do is get them to push a home to the number one spot. And then after we find that house, we always measure everything up close you know to that one and if we see several more houses and that number one is still in their head and they say it just doesn't measure up then I say what I'm hearing is that nothing else that we're seeing is really measuring up to to what you're wanting um, so it sounds like that number one house is yet maybe we need to schedule another showing and potentially write an offer on that one how does that make you sit how does that sound I think it sounds great <laughs> so let me ask you this I'm the buyer we walk into a house Oh my God, I love this house. This is the house. This is the house. If I can't get this house, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is the one. Let's write this up. I want to write this up. You're like, no problem, no problem. You call the listing agent. They've got two other offers on it as well. I'm your buyer. I want you to tell me in 30 seconds, you know, how do you, how do you make me feel better? How do you, how, what do you say to me to let me know what we got to do and make me also feel kind of okay about the situation all right oh my god i gotta have this house what am i gonna need you so find out I, got yes. multiple offers hit me so what i've just found out is that we have multiples are multiple offers on this property that you really like multiple offers <laughs> If this is one that you really want to go after, I need to pull some comparables. You need to come up with a number that you are most comfortable with. I'm talking about the number to where if I call you and say, this house is gone, your feelings are hurt, and you want to stop looking at the properties. So what does that mean? That means I need you to bring your highest, your best, your strongest offer. Nothing can take this house away from you. So I need you to give me that number. Keep in mind that the current market trends are showing that houses are going above their list price. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. But Lindsay, what if we do that and we still don't get it? We, we, you have to give your best shot. That's I don't know what thing. I'm going to do. <laughs> that's it's, a good a hard thing. Spot. it's a good thing the buyers don't act like this. This is when you hit me with candor. <laughs> hit me with some candor. Yeah, some, some honesty, honesty with candor. Care. Some candor. <laughs> anyway, Southern Fried. Um, good deal. Uh, next thing. You know, if you're going on a listing appointment and you have these discount brokerages out there and stuff, uh, you know, what is... You know, we don't talk about fees and stuff, but like, what is the way that you get somebody to list with you when you know they throw that out there that they they spoke with somebody or something like that, and it's like, oh my god, you know, inside you're like, oh my god, they're gonna not get the service they need. So like that, how do you get them to go, hey, you know what, cool, let's do this with you? It's exactly what you just said. It's oh my goodness, they're not gonna get the service that I know that I could provide, and I actually don't mind going up against other agents that uh, have maybe a lower commission or just going up against uh, other agents at all. I feel very strong in the customer service that I render. I feel very strong about my listing presentation. So with that being said, I can go in and feel extremely confident that I will leave potentially with the listing should the seller and I mesh and everything go well. Um, you have to remember that it's also about personalities matching up. You know, we don't have to go out there and get every single listing every single time. So maybe sometimes, you know, just, just measure that. Measure that for yourself. Uh, but I do love that question. And I just say, just remember when you go and buy something at a discounted rate or you buy something off brand, you're going to expect lesser quality, um, not the customer service that I feel like during this presentation, that the customer service that you're really looking for. So if you feel like that's your best option, you know, go that route for sure. But I've always learned that being the second wife is the best wife. <laughs> So even if nice. it doesn't work out, I, you know, I'd hope that you'd keep my number, give me a call, and um, also let me get have a shot at it. But it's very important to let them know that when you are listing a house at a lower rate, 
don't expect much. Yeah. Don't expect much. And when you're selling your the largest investment that you will ever make in your entire lifetime, you need to be extremely sure that you're going with the right agent. Good deal. All right, real quick, what's your number one recommendation for generating business? What's it, it doesn't have to be, there's no right or wrong here. What's the number one thing that generates business for you? To generate business, uh, it's all about getting out there and putting your best foot forward at any given time. I don't care if it's a bad day, you get up, you make phone calls, you reach out to somebody, you put your name tag on, you call the person that's been on your mind and maybe they're not a buyer or a seller but they have someone that they could refer to you. It's just about sticking your neck out there, being as vulnerable as possible, really, for lack of better terms, to make sure that you're doing everything possible to continue brand yourself as an agent it's not about anybody else it's about you branding yourself daily and everything you do as and it's an about agent. building momentum with that because yeah, it's all a, it's a snowball effect you just you can't ever let up so that's that's basically what you're saying is you just can't let up you can't let up that's what generates business you you are this this is what you do at, at Tony Robbins I just got back from one of his conferences and he said you have momentum you're either going in the wrong direction or you're going in the right direction. I like that. So you all you have momentum. You just need to identify it and make sure that you're always pushing yourself forward. Yeah. And in real estate, it can be more correct because I always say, too, in real estate, you're either going forward or you're going backwards because you can't sit anywhere because it costs you money to sit there. So technically, if you're not doing anything, you are going backwards because of the cost to be in this business. Yes. All right, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this final question. What's the number one thing you could recommend to an agent, new or existing or whatever, uh, you know, to build momentum or to, to get to success? What's the number one thing that you would recommend that, uh, that you would say, you know, if you had it all to do over again, this was something you wish you knew on day one? It's all about relationships. It is all about, again, talking to everyone you know, uh, sticking your neck out there, being at different community events, picking up a hobby, um, potentially at church or when you're playing tennis or at daycare, when you're picking up your kids. There's opportunity everywhere, and it is your job to identify that. I lied. There's one more question. <laughs> I just thought about this because I want your opinion on it, and I know the answer is a simple one, but we didn't talk about time management. And I think that is just something that is just, it's not fun to talk about and it's not very innovative. But on a scale of 1 to 10, what is time management ranked? A scale from 1 to 10, 15. 15. Time management is extremely important in any area of your life, but I think it's all about balancing. It's a continuous balance act. Um, it's very important that your life is not overlapping into your business, which makes your business be not as per, as successful. And it's very important that you're not being all business all the time because there is life outside real estate. I mean, we're working for a reason. We're working for a why. So make sure you're spending enough time in whatever it is um, that you enjoy. Boom. You heard it here. Thank you for tuning in today on the Southern Fried Real Estate Show.